can see your side of the map. What do we got? Oh, you didn't have anything in Aachen. I could have just... I was going to roll down the hill and launch an attack on Aachen. I'm like, yeah, why not? I'll just I'll roll a couple of APCs loaded with infantry and a couple of tanks right down the hill, and I'll just storm into it. And now that I see what you've got there, I would have taken it no problem. Yeah. <laughs> you got an yeah, F I mean, I, um, FO and an HQ, yeah. Yeah, from the very beginning, um, I... So I, I hate dividing my, my combat power. Yes. Um, so I massed it on my left. And uh, the idea was was to use my mobile anti-tank assets. So if you tried to like make an ex uh, like a, an exploitive attack on uh, attack on the right, I could move like tow missiles and stuff over there to hit you in the flank, basically. Because I had good line um, lateral sight lines, but no forward sight lines. So I figured if you came over the crest, I could deal with you in the open ground. So I wasn't really worried about that. Or obviously, this is when I had vehicles left. <laughs> Um, and then, yeah, I mean, it basically came down to someone had to attack. So I was prepping, uh, and I, I chose the left there for an attack because it was like, I mean, it was, it was the, I had the best possible sight lines available to the objective of anything. Cause it was like from from where that javelin team was up in those buildings, you could like just see over the lip and see the tops of the other buildings. Yep. Uh, like I was able to call in mortars and stuff from there. So yeah, because that's the guy that took out my tank behind the building too, isn't he? Yeah. Yep. So, I mean, I I was really reluctant to attack because, as you can clearly see, n none of my vehicle assets are are vehicles that can attack. Like none of them. They're not. The MGS Striker is, like, not even an anti-tank asset, and the tow missile vehicles are, like, a purely defensive, uh, like, countermeasure, essentially, because they're, I mean, they're an APC, and they can't fire or shoot, or, like, nearly as fast as a tank can, so, um, the real, like, mistake I made there was, um, I didn't, I didn't properly employ the javelins to their like fullest extent. I should have just had essentially bounding overwatch of javelins like the whole way, just like see or like a see, like a like a string of pearl of javelins like leading to the objective so that essentially at like any point I could turn one or more javelins against like your armor that tried to interdict me. Yeah, Although the was... problem there was that I I had a bunch of forward deployed javelins and then I had overwatching javelins back in the rear, but because the terrain is designed the way it is, like you were, you were like always in dead zone. Like I could never, I could never see the assets that you were using to engage my assets. And because they're like they're soft infantry targets in the open, being engaged by like APCs and shit, they were kind of, you know, yeah, screwed. To be honest, uh, I was really worried this mass infantry attack you had, like the whole platoon. I was really worried about it. Because the only thing I had in your way was a single squad split into two teams and a sniper team. Mm -hmm. And uh, I th I thought to myself, I'm like, well, I don't know if I can actually stop you. Because in order to shoot at you, I had to get my vehicle so close to you that any anti-tank weapon you were carrying would have been lethal. Yeah. But uh, when you hit that corner in the road right here where all these all these bodies are stacked behind these trees... Um, my, I can't see it, but yeah, I think I know what you're yeah, talking I'll, about. Yeah, I'll bounce it back to you in a sec. But my CV okay. that you had killed over in the corner, he could see easily right down into this corner of the road. And at mm -hmm. that point, I knew all I had to do was line my vehicles right there, and you would never advance past that point. So, I mean, I was really worried right up until that point. Because if you had gotten past the road and slightly down the slope in front of you, I never would have stopped you until you hit the buildings. Yeah. You yeah, yeah been, I, just, I couldn't. Yeah, you would have been on a reverse in. slope to my vehicles all the way in here. Mm -hmm. I just, I, I couldn't get any of my anti-tank assets like with sight lines near vehicles because, like, the way the way that slope is, it's like a tiered slope. Like, it's so you have the top, and then it like goes down a layer, and then it goes down another layer. Yeah, um, if you zoom the camera out, you can see the folds. Yeah, in the terrain and as so, it goes. 
So you you were essentially protected by that second layer. You were below the se so you were below the topmost layer. So I couldn't bring any of my anti tank assets to bear, which left only the forward deployed javelins. And again, you know, an infantry against modern IFVs like in the open, it's like it's it's a no brainer who's going to win that matchup. So that's essentially what happened and then when i tried to maneuver my uh, my other anti tank assets into position they just utterly failed just be i because again i mean i was i i basically i got caught in a position where i had to use an mgs striker like it's a tank but it's not a tank and so yeah. it it suffered the consequences of it and then the the tow twos were essentially useless as well because the they require long sight lines and they're also not offensive weaponry so it was issues there and then the strikers with their 50 cals can't really do anything to enemy ifvs and um the uh the lav 3s were essentially equally as useless because uh in the beginning of the battle um when there was that duel between the lav 3 and the martyr yep. like your martyr won that like easily like i put a solid like 20 something rounds into that martyr that apparently caused no damage no it turned... so it immobilized him, caused uh, optic and fire control damage. Okay. I mean, he's dead now, so I can't, I can't mm -hmm. see it. But when I go through the action again, I'll, uh, I'll put that up. But yeah, um, the thing that sucked about that was that martyr was part of the convoy that was going to head off to the left. And when you immobilized him, I immediately lost transport for that full squad of infantry, and I thought I was going to lose them all. And yeah. If it, if it wasn't for that Milan three that I had set up on the roof of the building, I would have. Or was it the tank that I think it was either it was either the Milan or the tank. I know your Milan got a shot off on something. I think it killed one of the MGSs. Yeah, way out, way out in the back behind the building. Mm-hmm. And uh, but yeah, I'm really surprised because I was shooting. I I sh I was shooting the hell out of the uh, the LAV with the twenty millimeter. And then he fired off his uh, Milan three that's mounted on the top of the vehicle, and it hit the yeah. front of your hit the front of your LAV, exploded, and I'm like, ah, that got him. And then your LAV just keeps shooting. I'm like, what the fuck? <laughs> I think it might have taken out his engine, but it certainly didn't kill him. So at that point, I was wondering. I'm like, well, if I don't have anti tank missiles capable of killing those LAVs, then I'm in real trouble. Yeah. But it worked out. Yeah, I mean, I. So if if I was like at, like you know an actual ground commander at that point, like in reality, I would have just buttoned down in the positions I'd had and just waited, definitely, essentially for like either enemy attack or follow-on forces to come and like carry the attack farther. Because I mean, like you know, like I said, like the one of the hardest things I had was that my entire force composition like none none of my assets were inherently um offensive in nature especially or against armored vehicles because the the infantry is obviously infantry is offensive but um not when you have to cross an open field covered by thermal bearing um uh, apcs and stuff and then the tow vehicles and the MGS strikers are all self they're they're defensive assets at best. So I'm surprised did it um when you initially moved out, did you put any troops like on the very reverse slope on the edge of Essen or Frankfurt on top of the hill? Or did you just ignore those completely? Um I, I don't remember what the points are. I, I could tell you if I saw it. But. Oh, it's the, the two large uh, victory locations going across the top of the hill. Uh, one of the large ones, I, I had troops in like the whole time. The other one, Essen, I essentially conceded. Oh, okay. Because uh, I remember an earlier comment you made in our voice chat. You were like, yeah, if our guys meet each other, they're going to meet each other at point-blank range. So when I moved across those... Uh, those victory locations i was basically expecting to crawl to just move very slowly to the other end and then we're at the very last point where it goes on a reverse slope i thought you were just gonna be like lined up in a fucking wall just waiting for you to come <laughs> over the top like civil war style like muskets behind <laughs> yeah, a, behind this stone wall that's what i was thinking honestly i'm like dude he's gonna be like waiting right there 
and I'm going to come over the top to clear the last like inch of the zone, and he's going to have all of his vehicles and troops just waiting for me. <laughs> well, yeah, so, I mean, initially, I... So I deployed the Canadian infantrymen, the Canadian rifle platoon. I gave them all the anti, well, supposedly anti-tank weapons. Yeah. And um, and I had them go up into that field, and then w w the second I like, I I essentially did like the first positions were kind of like in a line, like right at the edge, like they were like in the point, but at the very edge of it. So I was contesting it, but in order to kick me out, you, I mean, it would have, you know, it would have had to be like a Fredericksburg charge or something like that. Um. But um, I noticed the line of sight was like they couldn't see into the field because the field there was the tall grass and everything like that. Like they just they couldn't they couldn't see anything. So like if you had attacked into me, it literally would have happened. Like they could have spit at each other. It was going to be so close. So I was like, well, this is kind of stupid. Like there's no. Oh, I mean, even if I won that defensive battle like i mean i would have taken such horrific ca just because it was such close range like the kinetics would have been atrocious for both sides so i decided instead to have to split the squads into teams and have them like crawl out into the grass and just kind of form this like um uh like a picket essentially like a big screen like a fanned out screen in the the field and i figured if armored vehicles drove next to them as they're like lying down in the bottom of these like high reeds and stuff, yep. my infantry should see the armored vehicles first, and then engage them at point blank range with anti tank assets. And if and if they were if my infantry were just like laying down, and your infantry were like walking across them, I would hopefully get you know first rounds off on a lot of them. Yeah. Um, it. So as far as like the infantry engagement went, it kind of like went both ways. Uh, a few of my teams actually got caught moving when you engaged them. Yeah, at the very beginning of that skirmish, I did notice there was uh, some of your guys standing up, some of my guys standing up, mm -hmm. and uh, that was kind of the initial initial spat. I think it was these two headquarters team. Yeah, and then. Um... And then from there, it, it, it came down entirely to the fact that the AT weapons failed. Yeah. I couldn't kill any of your armored vehicles that were, like, moving them up. And then your armored vehicles just mopped up the infantry. They caused, like, most of the casualties there. There was a few grenade yeah. casualties, and there was, like, one or two bursts of machine gun fire that went through, like, three guys in one fell. It was, like, enfilade fire. But um, other than that, like, all the other casualties, like, 80%, maybe 75%. We're all due to the uh, the APCs. Yeah, at the end, I was I knew the time crunch was on, so what I did was I just wherever I had like a contact marker, I just quick moved a team of mine directly onto it. And uh, mm -hmm. when you when your guys would open fire at mine, they would become visible to everybody surrounding them. Yeah, so then my guys would just shoot them up. And uh, any of my uh, APCs that were riding by close enough would uh, would shoot as well. But, I mean, I basically just threw my guys at you at the end just to make sure I could clear the zone in time. Because otherwise I still would have been stuck in the grass trying to trying to pinpoint you. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, it's a bit callous, but it did work. So, I'll take it. I died for the greater glory of our victory or whatnot. <laughs> <laughs> ah, yes. The Netherlands are now completely safe. Yes. <laughs> We've defeated the invading American hordes. <laughs> <laughs> all right um yeah let me uh i'll bounce this over to you so you can see it and then uh if there's anything else you want to you want to add i'll send you this save and then i'll just open it up again so i can still see the map i should have done that before actually that's all right yeah, we learn as we go yeah okay i'm going That's uploading. And if you want to, you can uh, just type your your password in the Discord chat or something. Okay. OK, 
because uh, once I once I cut this all together with our after action, I'm going to uh, I'll just I'm going to look at like every single turn file, and I'm just going to pick out like all the most like awesome action moments, mm -hmm. and uh, put them together in a montage. Do you want me to just like copy and paste all the? Um... Oh no, I have all the files. Oh okay. They're all 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 of yours are in my outgoing folder. I'll just put them in the incoming, and then I'll have all of them in a row. Yeah. Here, I'll send it to you over uh, on Steam. That's it. Alrighty. open this up again. Yeah, whoever that platoon HQ over there is, uh, give him a medal. <laughs> Distinguished Service Cross. Yeah. Silver Star, at least. He took out that martyr, and then right as the turn ended, he was aiming at my CV with another AT4. Yeah. <laughs> I'll rename him, uh... Second Lieutenant Dean, after Major Dean from Korea. Or not Major, Jesus. Um, Lieutenant General. Oh, it's the radio operator. That's who's doing it. Major General. No, it was, yeah, it was Major General. <sighs> All right, let's see. Machine gun over here. Oh, uh, yeah. It was the platoon sergeant who uh, fired the AT4 at the martyr and killed it. Ah. And then the RTO was the guy who was uh, aiming the second one. Huh, that's pretty cool. I wonder if the AT4 would have killed that CV. I have my doubts. Um, let me see what angle he's at. I mean, it's a frontal aspect shot, and the armor was slightly angled, so, I mean, it's it's a heat round, but still. Definitely, I think that's definitely uh, an immobilize. Yeah. It doesn't kill him, although the CV is also aiming, <laughs> is also aiming at him, so it, it depends whether the CV shoots his machine gun or this guy shoots the AT-4 first. Yeah. I'm going to back up. Uh... So yeah, so I had I had troops all in Essen, and I conceded Frankfurt. Yeah. Oh, I want to screenshot this. This is amazing. It's too bad it's got the game over in the middle. I think there's a way to clear that. Yeah, I don't remember. Yeah. <laughs> I've never never put that much effort into it, but I'm gonna put it in the <laughs> uh, I'll put it in the shock force picture thread. All right. That'll be cool. So yeah, when you moved up to Essen, uh, you said you had guys in the back edge of it. Was that like where the uh, 
where this kind basically of where the road is oh, yeah okay. where that like where the orchard and the road meet kind of right there and they just they couldn't see anything yeah, so st staring at nothing but a wheat field mm -hmm. but uh you did get most of your guys in because the only thing i saw was that one team and that was the only thing that really clued me off that you had uh infantry in the wheat field here I mean, I also got the entire platoon killed, so... Yeah. Well, I mean, I'm fairly certain I outnumbered you over here, especially when I took... I had uh, two squads and two tanks in Frankfurt that were going to assault down the hill into Aachen, and, and I was like, no, nope. I just I pulled them out, reversed, came back right over into Essen, and they just stormed right through it. Yeah. Yeah, like I said, it was the uh, it was the armored vehicles that uh, caused most of the casualties there. Who is that? Oh, he's the only one left. Second squad, A team, a plus two veteran with a plus one motivation. No wonder he's actually still moving around instead of just running away. <laughs> Yeah, this full squad survived. Oh, never mind. There's a B team right behind him, so he's all right. He's still got some buddies. They're okay. They took two casualties. They took two casualties. Second platoon HQ was wiped out completely. Second squad took two casualties. Third squad took two. They took two more. Yeah, to be honest, casualties were just heavy on both sides, especially with how small the forces were. I mean, yeah, my, my force was, like, literally annihilated. Seriously, when you factor in the uh, the vehicles, it's like 80. Actually, it's like 90 percent casualties. Really, well, I don't know, 80 percent because most of the most of the infantry strikers got out. The Canadians bore the brunt of it. I mean, they there's yeah, with, like none of them left. With the LAVs, yeah, that is true. I'm looking and I see. Oh, you actually had a company HQ. Lucky dog. I didn't. I mean, it was kind of useless. Yeah, but it gives that overall command bonus. Mm-hmm. But, yeah. It's kind of hard to tell who is who. I think that's... I don't know. I, I don't remember how to read the shock force uh, icons on the uh, on the interface. It's like I know that's striker. I think that's I think that's your Canadian. What are they? Mech Mech infantry. Uh, let me look. Yeah, they were mechanized infantry. All right. Well, is there anything you want to add for the benefit of the audience? Sorry, you kind of cut out there. Is there anything you want to add for the benefit of the audience? Um. Hmm. I mean, I guess. A big part of this this battle um, comes down to you kind of have to like suspend like reality a little bit because, like I said, the 
if you were actually like a commander, if you were, what was it, Canadian Captain McPherson here, and you were in charge of this force and your objective, you know, these were your objectives and everything like that, I would have taken up the positions I took, right, like in Aachen and uh, Essen and Berlin and um, in these areas and had my, like, the anti-tank vehicles kind of spread out and in kind of like a mobile defense. And uh, just sat and waited it out. And then from there, you just radio up to higher and just tell them, yeah, here we are. The enemy's in front of us somewhere. We can't really see them. We know they're there. Um, if you want to take any ground, you send tanks or send Bradleys or send even just, like, more striker infantry um, so that we can, like, efficiently mass and more fire support as well, like... Give me some friggin' tube artillery, not these damn mortars. <laughs> um, I wouldn't even want air support. I just, just, just a battery of one five fives would really help. Um, yeah, I mean, so, so yeah, I mean, realistically, you with the force you're given in this battle, you would just you you take the ground that you were able to take quickly, and then you just dig in and button down. And if the enemy wants to try to attack you you like let them make that mistake and you would trit their forces horribly because their sight lines are like the sight lines for attacking are so atrocious that yeah. unless you have like overwhelming firepower uh like a bunch of tanks basically there's no way you can adequately cover your forces uh even, with the assets or at least on my side of the fence here yeah, with the assets even, i had even from the back of your end uh like if you would park your atgms way in the back uh, they still can't see into the uh, into the hill victory zones until you get right to the very front of it. Right. Yes. There's no there's no way to effectively contest um, Essen and Frankfurt without being at point blank range with any of the at whether it's infantry or AT or whatever. So those you have to just kind of like accept the fact that if the enemy attacks those, it's going to be a knife fight. And you just kind of have to you know dig deep. Um, it's the same. It's the same from my side actually. Yeah, I know it is. I'm down here yeah. on the ground looking up, and all you can see is the very edge. So, yeah, it looks like the key to this map is get into Frankfurt or Essen as fast as you can. Because if, yeah, if you don't get in there early enough, you're never going to get in. Right, yeah, I mean, you have to you have to get up close enough to, like, get a toehold, but you can't, you can't go over the ridge, because once you go over the ridge, you're, like, in massive open sight lines for, like, the entire enemy's force, because it's literally just a downslope. Um, it's, it's at the top where all the funky LOS things happen, where it's, like, kind of like the plateau of the road and, like, the high grass and the walls and stuff like that, so it does, it kind of, it forces, like, it forces a knife fight, essentially, at the very top, yep. which is the only, like, little, it's like a, what, like a 30 to 50 meter, like, LOS barrier you come in contact with. Yeah, at least in Essen. Frankfurt was open, which is why I sent more forces through there because I didn't want you to I didn't want you to catch me while I was in there. Mm -hmm. But one thing I was nervous about when this battle first started was I uh, I deployed in uh, Dresden and Cologne and uh, I didn't move immediately on the top of the hill until it real I realized like that was a mistake. Because if you had gone straight from your deployment zone right up into Essen and Frankfurt without stopping anywhere else, you would have been in there waiting for me by the time I arrived. And uh, that kind of scared me a little bit, and that's when I'm like, okay. And I just started picking up like everything I had available and just chucking it into Essen and Frankfurt as fast as yeah. I could. If I were uh, you, now knowing, doing some uh, some hindsight of Coca. <laughs> Um, or Ococle, as some people call it. Yeah. Um, yeah, so like I said, if, if I were you, knowing what you had to work with, like from the get-go, I probably just would have sent my tanks over the top at Frankfurt and just gone for, like, total shock effect with, like, a light infantry reconnaissance screen up at the top, as far up as there as I could get them. Because you can get... You can actually get a decent... If, if you're looking from your perspective, so what is that, looking uh, west? Yep. You come up kind of on the left side of Frankfurt. It kind of it plateaus up here. But if you look around, there's really, 
even from like Berlin, I don't think, I don't think I'd be able to see you from there. From even Berlin, with a, no. But if you had a javelin team sitting in in the upper floor of Aachen, mm -hmm. you would have just you would have murdered me on the way up if I didn't have infantry there to spot. Right. Yeah, that's, I probably would have popped a tank, but then you that's, could probably that's just what mass I was, fires into it. That's what I was worried about at the very beginning. I thought you might immediately throw a javelin team on the roof of that three-story building in Aachen and then on the roof of the big building, which you did in Berlin. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, well, if if he has guys up there, any attempt I make to cross uh, Frankfurt would have ended in disaster. But now, looking at it, it wasn't until after I realized uh, that the terrain plateaus back there. I'm like, no, wait, I can actually get into Frankfurt no problem. And just drive straight across to the other end without being seen from Aachen, and that's yeah, when and I, actually, that's when I changed my plan. I'm like, okay, I'm gonna stop and I'm gonna pivot and I'm gonna move all my guys over to the left and go through Frankfurt. Yeah, looking looking from the rooftop in Aachen, uh, you can't even see any of your destroyed vehicles. You can see a few of the uh, LAVs and I think a striker or so, but oh wait, you might. You can just barely see the turret of a CV-90, but otherwise, like, you're... If I had a Javelin team up there and you had attacked the way you did, like, kind of through Essen and then down towards Berlin, I wouldn't have line of sight on you with a Javelin until you were basically in Berlin. Because, again, be, just because of the way the terrain shapes. But, yeah, if I, if I were you... Or not if I were you, but if, if I was... If I had your forces, if we were, like, flipped, yep. I probably would have done a, um, with, uh, with the Germans, with the Martyrs, the Panzer Grenadiers, and the tanks, I would have punched over the left side of uh, Frankfurt down into Aachen and then tried to essentially pivot it, pivot it to the north and then just engage whatever I could see from there and kind of turn, try to turn the flank that way. And if I had to, like, eat a javelin missile to do it I'd probably like accept that if it was just one yeah well the thing yeah, is just... uh, aside from that I knew you had a striker infantry platoon and I knew that each squad had its own javelin <laughs> aside from what you might have had uh, an attached javelin team which I don't yeah. think you did you just split off an anti-tank team yeah, I know I did. I didn't have any attached uh, assets. But yeah, three javelins all all running at once can wipe out a tank platoon in in like a minute. So I didn't want to. I didn't. Not to mention they're worth twenty points each, so I didn't want to risk them. Mm -hmm. But uh, to be honest, what you just said about going through Frankfurt and hitting Aachen, that was my plan after I noticed that I could move through Frankfurt without being seen. Mm -hmm. But uh, doing it at the very beginning, I don't. Eh. It depends. If I could have caught you guys while they were still in their vehicles deploying, then maybe it would have worked. But other than that, if you had already dismounted your infantry, I don't think I would have had a chance. Because I had, I had no idea of knowing how many guys you sent to Berlin or Aachen or whether you were you were trying to charge up and hold the back of Frankfurt or, uh, or Essen. Right. Like, I didn't know where I was going to meet you. And you could probably... Uh, uh might have assumed especially from like the brief because the, the briefing essentially says that it's a rather like the forces are somewhat symmetrical yeah so when you saw you in had the briefing tanks, you probably it, assumed that i had tanks no i mean it lists both friendly and enemy forces in the briefing you can see everything yeah. they have oh everything yeah click on click on the briefing you can see enemy oh, forces yeah. and it and it lists everything and then friendly forces it lists everything so i mean i knew what you had and i figured you knew what i had Yeah, the only thing that really caught me off guard was the uh, the leopards. Yeah, I was surprised that... I mean, it says, yeah, we gave you 2A4s instead of 2A6s, which is fine, but I figured the counterbalance to the leopards would have been the, the Lav 3 2s and the, the Striker MGSs, but to be honest, they didn't really do that well. I mean, no, the the lab three with the toes didn't kill anything. Yeah. I like, yeah, like I said, none of the Canadian anti-tank assets killed anything. Uh, all the 
all the vehicle kills that I inflicted were was like one AT4 and like six javelins, I think, or five. Uh, yeah, I think so. I mean, I can go over them. Yeah, it was six. You lost six vehicles total, five armored vehicles and uh, one tank. So all of those were it was so it was five javelins and one uh, that that one AT4 at the uh, the end there. Yeah. Because he was javelin, he was javelin. This tank was javelin. This CV over here burning was javelin. And this guy was a combination of several weapons. This other CV in the wheat field at Essen. Uh, he got hit with, I think, a couple of laws. He got he hit with something. Two, got hit yeah, with something larger. I think the MGS striker managed to land around on him as well, and then the javelin finally finished him off. Yeah, the javelin finished him, but he took two law missiles like right to his right side, and it like did nothing. <laughs> yeah, I'm fairly certain these kind of bolt-on plate-looking things. I'm pretty sure that counts as space armor. I'm not sure though. Yeah, it's definitely armored well. Because you can see, to, uh... from, can see from the top how it's kind of like, how it's kind of like ventilated. There's like that, mm -hmm. that grid-looking thing there. Yeah. Let me let me get the camera inside. Oh yeah, there's huge space. Actually, you put the camera inside, you can see where the tracks go through it. There's mm -hmm. like outer, there's outer plates, and then there's inner hull. Yeah. So I think the laws just hit the outer plate, and they didn't penetrate all the way through. Yeah, I think you're right. And it was clearly too high to uh, throw the track. Uh, well, he did get a he, he did get immobilized right before he oh, died. He did? Yeah, oh, okay. he was. That's why I couldn't give him a face command in the other direction. I had to just put a cover arc up and hope that he could see that. That uh, what was it? The MGS, I think. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm pretty sure. Oh no! No, it was oh, the it MGS. was the it was the Mark 19 striker over here. Yeah, that's right. I think your tank killed yeah. my MGS. Yeah, because I, I remember I fired the, the MGS round at that uh, that leopard, and it like did nothing. And then he returned the fire, and it did a lot. Yep. He tracks were dead. Targeting IR optics, radio, and both smoke launchers were damaged. Mm hmm. But uh, that's about it. Right. Well, I got people moving around over here. Uh, is there anything else you you want to add? Oh, what was that? Is there anything else you want to add for the uh, recording? No, I think that basically covers it. I mean, it was a good battle. It was uh, it was fun. It was really tense. It was oh, like definitely. a it was a knife fight essentially. Like two drunk, um, two drunk guys in a phone booth, I call it. <laughs> oh yeah, no, it it definitely was. Because both both sides got nicked pretty good. One more than the other, obviously. Like I I took a pounding, but uh, it was it was fun. Alrighty, well I'll just cut this off here, and uh, we'll follow this up with a montage of sorts, and we'll see what happens there. Okay, bye.